Hello, I'm Lorenzo and welcome to KSP2 Mars. Today we have episode 8 and we follow a slight success. Last episode marks the first time we got anything into orbit here with the real solar system mod here. Look at that far, far horizon. We got a Sputnik-esque probe into orbit, and albeit a low orbit, it was 800 kilometers by 94, which is still in the upper reaches of the atmosphere, so it's not going to stay there forever, much like the real Sputnik did. Now, between these episodes and very much behind the scenes, I did some rocket tweaking. And I didn't want to... Um, keep the results from you. What I did I was I, I took the rocket that put our Sputnik-esque probe in orbit, added a whole new stage with a lot of boosters and re-added some of the science payload. All of it. So basically I added another stage to the rocket and I was hoping, I am hoping, that uh, that would make it to orbit with some payload so that we can do some science. Here's the rocket, familiar from the last episode. This top half is pretty much identical, except that the bit inside the fairing does have a payload, and then under here is another uh, another column of liquid boosters surrounded by solid boosters. Now, I have already flight tested this, so what's going to happen is no surprise, not to me at any rate, but here goes, and I'll just shut up and let you enjoy. <laughs> Is that not a thing of beauty? Actually, when I launched it, something different altogether happened, so let's try that one more time. What happened when I launched it was that it got uh, got a fair bit higher, and then basically every little stalk of rocket went off on its own trajectory, which looked fairly impressive, but this, this was good as well. So let's give it another go. Here goes. Let's Let's not turn on the stability system this time and see if we actually go somewhere. We are actually going somewhere, but it's probably not space. And you can see the stalks are wobbling back and forth. Well, any rocket engineer worth their salt will recognize this problem. And, ah, this is more like it. This is what happened when I launched it. Anyway, we know what to do about this. We need to add more struts. We need to duct tape all of this together. Now, let's give the probe a brief glimpse of the outside world. Well, look at that, we even have an engine. And this was the payload this rocket was intending to put into orbit so that it could radio back its findings of the materials bay. None of that is going to happen now though, and it's instead just going to crash to the ground again. So, we need struts. If we go to the space center, and make a quick trip to the R&D facility. Here it is, research and development. We find struts here in the general construction tab. We need 45 science points for that and we have 26. So there's nothing to it than to break out our biome exploration missile number two. This one is crude. Um, actually, I'm going to redesign this to not be crude. I'm going to do that and then I will meet you on the launch pad. See you in a bit. Alright, here we are on the pad and you might be surprised after my last statement to see Fred Burry Kerman here in the command pod. Indeed not an artificial intelligence. This is because I realized that Kerman, Kerbals actually have value and can do science by themselves. So we bring one along. I updated the rocket a little bit to have controllable fins and I've turned the heat shield upside down or as it's commonly known as right side up. What we are going to attempt to look there is the iRocket 
Sputnik-esque sort of almost orbiting satellite, a very proud moment for the Kerbal kind, we are going to attempt to reach two biomes today. We're going to attempt to reach the North Pole, and we're going to attempt to reach a desert, and we're going to try try for this desert, but if that doesn't work, we're going to settle for this patch, which looks deserty as well. Alternatively, we can try here the highlands or something, maybe that's here. I don't really know where the biomes are, but I hope it stands to reason somewhat. First things first, though, we are now going to attempt to reach the North Pole, and to that end, I'm going to be launching this rocket. Hang on, though, the frame rate is horrible. I'm going to fix that first. Right, there we are. I hope everything is fixed. And here comes the launch. Stability on. We have controllable fins now, but of course, still no struts. So I'm going to go straight up until the boosters run out. Oh, no, these boosters, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go straight up until the boosters run out and then uh, start angling north. And the important thing is that we get a very shallow trajectory because our ability to, well, withstand entry heating is still very limited at best. I'm hoping to unlock some better heat shields in the near future so that we can possibly somehow safely get back to the planet from orbit again. If and when these boosters separate, I'm going to consider the launch successful and I will fast forward for you until we reach the ice caps or somewhere else so you don't have to watch endlessly boring launches. You go. That seems to be going well, so now I'm going to alter the trajectory. Should be fairly straightforward with the nice gimbaling rockets we have and the controllable fins. I'm not going to angle over too much because we are concerned about aerodynamic effects. But a nice 45 degree angle should be attainable. Because we're not going that fast yet, we're still subsonic. And that means we can still somewhat control this rocket. So I'm going to lock the angle here. We are already at 15 kilometers. So far this is looking like a fairly clean rocket launch. I'm going to skip over the intervening bit and talk to you when something interesting happens. See you in that time. Right, and here we are and interesting things are happening. I had attempted to get to the, um, how can I call it, get to the North Pole, look at the map view, that did not work out, not even close. I had figured a 30 kilometer altitude would be nice. I'm going to separate now and hope that the heat shield will do something. We have one parachute left, two of the parachutes have burnt off. Fortunately, I can now keep the remaining parachute in the shade of the heat shield, hopefully, which is working. That engine is burning up over there. In short, what happened is... Ooh, the parachute is burning up again. I'm trying to shade it. We were still under engine power. Everything was going swimmingly, at least it appeared to be. And unbeknownst to me, we started dropping back into the atmosphere and suddenly we encountered some shock heating that burnt off two of the three parachutes and is now threatening to ruin our day. That's probably not going to happen because we are at a rather sedate kilometer per second now and this heat shield does appear to be working. For the next iteration of this rocket I'm going to put these goo canisters up here on the pod. Hopefully they will then be shielded by the heat shield as well and I'm going to try and arc a little bit higher over the atmosphere and hopefully that will help us not uh, not die. Where we are going to land is anyone's guess at this point. We are still at Kerbin's upper atmosphere. It doesn't tell me which biome we are in. I am hoping that this will count as grasslands or whatever, something else than shores that or the launch pad. Or the, indeed the water. No matter, even though the mission has not reached the North Pole, not by a long shot, we have managed to secure a materials study from Kerbin's upper atmosphere and we didn't have that before so that's good that will give us 14 science points and the same goes for the goo study if we now also manage to safely land in a new biome then we will have an, a lot of science and probably even enough to add some struts to our wannabe orbiter I'm going to deploy the parachute just to be sure 
and hope that that one off angle parachute will in fact be able to land us safely. Remember because the top parachute and the one on this side they burned off before I had a chance to react to the sudden heat. I will admit to the Kerbal Space Program review board that will surely be commissioned to investigate this failure. I was actually watching television while it happened. You see the launches and flights of these real solar system worlds and missions are rather long and as long as the mission is proceeding as planned I can watch television or do something else except of course when everything suddenly starts to be on fire. Then we get these crazy scenarios where we are in fact floating down gently on one parachute. It's all good though, because our frame rate is again very low, there's something up with my computer, I'm just going to go ahead and reboot that after this is landed in order to, well, fix it. For now, let us cross our fingers and hope that uh, we, can, we can in fact land it. And I have some good news, the reaction wheels are able to keep the craft upright. So I'm going to do that just before landing so that in fact the landing legs can touch down first. Hopefully then Fredbury will be able to go outside, do some surface science and unlock those parts that will make our rockets stick together so that we can have larger rockets. That's the point at any rate. Well, coming up on parachute deployment, hopefully the craft will survive it. Perhaps it's not good to be Perhaps we want to be like this under the parachute, and it, there we are, completely survivable. I'm very happy with that. And now that we are going this slowly, the reaction wheels are in fact insufficient to right the craft. No matter. The heat shield did a marvelous job, it's only partially ablated, not even halfway there. And of course we had the backup heat shield under the pod here. Fredbury, your safety was always assured. This will, however, mark the first time we will return a materials bay and a goo canister from the upper atmosphere. So that is a milestone in this mission, and hopefully the science points will propel us onwards and upwards to riches and wonders. Yes. I should write speeches, I think. Anyway, it's now just waiting for this capsule to hit the ground. It's not much longer now. Oh, in the meantime, I can do an EVA report here. Is that smart? Let's do it. EVA report, please. Keep it. Grasslands, it is a new biome. Great. That means we get a lot of science. So we're going to send, review the stored data. Oh, no, we can't send it because we don't have the electricity for that. Whoa, no. Are you kidding me? No! The the materials bay that exploded was in fact the one that had the data from the upper atmosphere. We still don't have it. Ah! And the fact that the capsule is now detached from this means we can't even activate these two things in the grasslands here. The gods are not smiling upon us today or any of the past days. Crew report from the grasslands, keep that as well, please. And then it's up to Fredbury. Oh, the hatch is obstructed, he can't exit. But fortunately we can roll the capsule. Oh. Fortunately he can now take a surface sample, I should hope. Get an EVA report from the grasslands, keep that data. And do a surface sample. Yep, looks like dirt. Great. Keep the data. All in all, we still have some science points. And I'm just going to recover all these things, but still, no material study from the upper atmosphere, and more importantly, no material study or goo study from the grasslands. So, that's annoying. That is definitely annoying. More importantly, though, relax. Nothing has gone wrong. We can recover these. We can recover these vessels. Get the science. Not be angry. This is one thing a space program teaches you: to be patient. To not be angry. 5.2 science. We have 50 science points. 
we can in fact develop strut technology something that is sorely needed let's go to the R&D center and develop strut technology here we go struts are now technology the next thing is going to be advanced rocketry to round out uh, this bit of the tech tree and of course to get these larger fuel tanks so that the part count of our space missiles can be somewhat reduced to see how we get on with that check back for the next episode for now i'm signing off going to reboot the computer and fix some things and more importantly develop new rockets for use in extraordinary circumstances on this real sized solar system hey that could be an rsss the real sized solar system great Anyway, I'm Lorenzo. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.